Hi there and welcome to All About Money. I'm your host, Dhruv Tikaker. Over the past month, a dried up riverbed in the Iranian city of Isfahan, south of Tehran, has been the site of several protests. These have largely centered around one issue, water, or the lack thereof. Iran has been grappling with water shortages for many years now, and while it has been attributed to issues like climate change and international sanctions, critics argue that at its core, it's also very much a management problem. So that's what we're going to be focusing on to today on our show. Joining me from the U.S. to talk about this is Kaveh Madani. He's an environmental scientist and research professor at the City College of New York, an activist and the former deputy head of Iran's Department of Environment. Uh, Kaveh, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, great having you on. Um, I suppose the best place to start would be, uh, you know, a general overview of what we're seeing in Iran right now. I, I mean, now prior uh, to uh, prior to this discussion, we were speaking about uh, the issue, and I did bring up that I wanted to focus on the water crisis. And then you corrected me, and you uh, you in fact said that it's not a, a crisis. We're past that point. We're actually looking at a water bankruptcy in Iran. So starting from there, I wanted to obviously break a few things down. Um, what brought it to the brink of a crisis, and, and when did it switch from being a, a crisis to uh, an issue of bankruptcy? Well, crisis is an extreme um, situation in which all forces unite to address the problem. And, and when you are in a crisis, uh, you try to mitigate um, the problem and, and do whatever you can to restore the system. But what we are seeing in today's Iran is, is a lot of damages that cannot be uh, restored. It's, it's not uh, possible to restore the groundwater level uh, back to where it was, um, at least in a, in a reasonable period of time. It's, it's, it's not possible to restore um, lots of wetlands, rivers, um, land subsidence and, and, and lots of other things that we, we have seen as the result of water shortages. Now, um, speaking of water bankruptcy, I, I say this is a post-crisis stage. We are in a, in a situation uh, where, where we have to admit that we have failed. Iran has, has failed. And in, in addition to mitigation, Iran has to also invest in adaptation and getting used to a, an unfortunate and sad new normal. Um, when I say water bankruptcy, but I also explain it in, in this way. Um, um, imagine your checking account being your surface water. Iran has, be, has been using its, its surface water. Whenever you are short with, you know, in your checking account, you go after your um, saving account. Iran uh, went and, and used its its underground resources, under uh, groundwater, which it inherited from you know the my generation essentially inherited uh, from our ancestors. Um, that that resource has been also drained. Now we have a lot of right holders. You know we have uh, we, we, who are asking for water, but there is no enough water in the account. So the this 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 state is is water bankrupt with with lots of um, um, credit cards actually that cannot be paid back with with lots of creditors that who cannot be satisfied and 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 and. Environment is is one of them. Actually, it's 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 the silent one. Actually, the silent uh, right holder, w which cannot speak out and, and ask for its right. And but but it, there are signs. We see the rivers being dry. We see dust storms now coming from from the dry wetlands. We see desertification. We see deforestation. We see wildfires around the country. We see um, lots of uh, problems, all caused by really, really bad management and exacerbated by frequent droughts, climate change, and other issues that you can think of. Uh, when you say bad management, uh, walk us through the water governance structure uh, in Iran. What are we talking about when you mean bad management? Is it, is it an issue of, of corruption? Is there um, you know, an uneven distribution of resources to manage uh, water supplies? What is it exactly? Bad management and governance has lots of elements from this struct, you know, structure of, of the um, water management, how many, how, how the stakeholders are involved in the process, who, who makes a decision on how to allocate water, where to develop, and so on. Iran has a very central and hierarchical system, and that comes with, with, with 
uh, that actually paves the way for, for having corruption. It, it also um, in, decreases in the, the efficiency and effectiveness of, of, the, of the management system. But, but you know, putting these things aside, we have to think about what, you know, why Iran ended up in this situation. Iran is a water short region to begin with. This is natural to Iran. Iran is, is not as rich as, for example, Hong Kong when it comes to water availability. It's a Middle Eastern country. Among the Middle Eastern countries is actually is one of the water rich countries. But, but um, it, it had a certain budget naturally. Then it decided to, to develop like many other countries. Um, the oil money was available and Iran decided to develop further and further. One of the uh, one of the sectors that it, it, Iran uh, developed was the agricultural sector, which, which currently takes more than 90% of Iran's water. And, and because of Iran's climate, uh, most, of the, most of the agriculture is irrigated. Wherever you irrigate, you eventually run out of water unless you put a cap on you know how much how much water you're using for irrigation how how what what the area of of irrigated land should be in the country what crops you choose and so on what we are seeing today is uh, was not created overnight this is the outcome of decades of bad management poor governance and lack of foresight all of these things were projectable all of these things were um, you know uh, were predictable. People warned about it, including myself. That lots, of, you know, many years ago, we talked about the current situation. But but the government, the system, ignored all these things. As soon as there was a rain and a flood, they thought that the the, the bankruptcy is over, and they can continue uh, developing and developing and developing in dry areas. Central Iran right now, the city of Isfahan is suffering from a clear sign of water bankruptcy. You don't see a drop of water in the river. Lots of farmers who are mad. Industry is suffering. The city is suffering. And lots of people are, are, you know, and, and are complaining about the environmental injustice implications of the development plans. Uh, you touched on uh, the agricultural sector over there, and you mentioned, obviously, that uh, you know, that sector is consuming over 90 percent, which is a baffling uh, number to begin with. But, you know, something else that you've mentioned in your writing before is how uh, this sector is economically inefficient. Now, when you say it's economically inefficient, is it, uh, is it because of the resources that the sector has at its disposal? Is it because of the infrastructure that's provided to these farmers, incentives that are provided to these farmers? What exactly are we talking about when you, when you say an inefficient um, system that we have in place for, uh, for farming? Iran has, unfortunately or fortunately, an oil-based economy. So oil is, is what, what pays for uh, for the country. So the oil income is, is, is transferred to the agriculture sector um, as sub subsidies. Subsidies are given to farmers on, on, on land, um, on, um, on electricity, on, um, on water, on fertilizers, and, and so on. Um, so, th so that in that sector, farmers can can continue growing growing food. Iran also has had this slogan of, of food self sufficiency after the 1979 revolution. Um, the em emphasis on food self sufficiency has become um, um, stronger under sanctions, under the war with Iraq. Iran has been always paranoid about this issue. So on one side, there was incentive to grow the agriculture sector. On the other side, you know, on the other hand, there was um, the issue of jobs and employment. The agriculture sector is providing jobs to the poor, to the subsistence farmers who, who, who don't have any alternative source of income and, and livelihood. As long as um, the, the economy functions this way, um, Iran needs to bribe its water and land to the farmers so they can operate. This may, has made uh, the, the agriculture sector very inefficient. So um, the added value of, of added economic value of using water in the sector is quite low. In, in dry parts of Iran, the farmers are growing cucumber and, and tomatoes, which are um, using a lot of water and, and don't result in a big economic return. Um, on top of all these issues, we have the issue of 
uneven distribution of the population. The population of Iran got more than doubled after the 1979 uh, revolution. And, 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 and then uh, these people were, um, dis were, were went to uh, some metropolitan city, like a few big metropolitans, and the rest of the country doesn't have enough uh, medium-sized cities. So all the resources must be given to the big cities. And this this results in uneven development, which is another cause of um, environmental in, in, injustice. Um, so all these you know, ingredients together um, provide a perfect mix to, to not only damage the environment, but also make, make, make humans unhappy and dissatisfied and, and, and hopeless, actually, uh, because now they're, they're losing their income, unless Unless Iran revises its economy, reforms its econo economy drastically, unless it, it expands its, its industrial sector, it provides alternative jobs in the service and industrial sector to the farmers, it is really hard to, to um, revise and reform the agricultural sector and make it industrialized. Uh, Kaveh, obviously a lot more to get to over there, but we do have to go to a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Still here with us is Kaveh Madani. Kaveh, thank you uh, for staying with us. Before the break, uh, we talked about the agricultural sector and its impact on the water problem. Um, and you did touch on uh, the issue of economic self-sufficiency, which is what Iran, which the political leadership in Iran has, has kind of constructed Iran's uh, economic identity around to some degree for many years. Uh, but I was wondering, um, is that a problematic view to sort of uh, see Iran as being uh, economically independent when it comes to agriculture is that does that put a disproportionate amount of burden on uh, the farmers or the agricultural sector knowing that uh, the the water supply might not be able to keep up with uh, their demands uh, I think the answer is quite clear just yeah. look at the footages uh, from uh, from Iran you go around the country um, and you see the same situation dry wetlands dry rivers and, and bankrupt farmers. So the answer is is there. Water is a finite element. You can't. You can't. It is a limit to growth, and you cannot continue using it uh, without getting you know getting a feedback from the nature. And this is the feedback that Iran is receiving. A smart, a wise leader, a wise um, and, and strategic planner uh, un would understand this this natural limitation of Iran. And instead of insisting on, on making this sector bigger and bigger, it tries to, to make other sectors um, stronger. So it, it, that would create opportunities for trade. So Iran uh, currently and, and for many years has been using oil as a leverage actually. And even under sanctions, oil has been Iran's um, you know, advantage um, in the market, Iran has been selling its oil and buying other things. It, Iran could and, and still can uh, sell industrial products, petrochemical uh, products, and lots of other valuable goods, and and buy the you know cheap food. When it comes to strategic food, I understand. I have sympathy for the leaders who are concerned about um, food insecurity and and hunger. They have seen the issues in Iraq. They have seen Saddam Hussein going down. They have seen Qatar you know, facing problems when it went under embargo. So that is a real uh, threat. I, I, I have sympathy for them, even though I don't um, approve uh, their way of managing the country or, or their way of uh, their ideology. But um, this is a valid concern. But Iran right now is not even successful in producing its wheat, it's, it's importing wheat. It has mm. failed to make itself food self-sufficient. It's not you know, food secure, it's not water secure, it's not environmentally secure. And of course, all of these combined, then humans are not secure. Lots of national security issues are now arising from this sort of bad planning and, and insisting on, on, on the mission impossible. And you brought up the issue uh, of trade over there. I did want to talk about international sanctions because some have argued that uh, sanctions placed by a lot of countries on Iran have essentially handcuffed uh, the country's um, economic development. 
And in some sense, that has that has also tied in with uh, the water problem that uh, the country is facing. Uh, what do you make of that assessment? Is that too much of a reach to sort of attribute it to international sanctions? Or do you think that's, that's a fair um, you know, view or take uh, on the issue? Actually, I, I have pu publications on, on, on sanctions and their impacts on the environment. So I can, I can approve um, that, that um, san economic sanctions have unintended implications for the environmental sector. I'm not arguing who is guilty here, the sanctioner or the sanctionee, but um, environment becomes the victim. Why? Sanction are, de sanctions are designed to, to put pressure on the economy, to paralyze the country's economy. When a country, uh, country's economy is under pressure, uh, then it becomes more resource exhaustive. It doesn't have the bandwidth to deal with, with environmental issues, which are normally seen as a non-urgent uh, matter um, in, in the public policy agenda. Um, and a proof for, for that is, is looking at the, the uh, priority of the environment for governments around the world during the pandemic, during this crisis, environment was marginalized, climate change was marginalized, a lot of negotiations were delayed and, and big meetings were, were delayed because when people are dying, you know, you don't have the bandwidth to think about or invest about the future, good or bad, this is the situation. If, if you are starving, I'm not going to give you any goosebump if I tell you something about how you know the world would look like in 2050s. If your children are starving, you don't care about the next generation. So, so when countries go under pressure, when when societies are under pressure, they don't think about the environment. The the issue is survival. It's pursuing the ideology, and that's what Iran has been doing. It's it's in the resistance economy mode. It has become uh, more resource exhaustive. It's mining more. It's polluting more to be able to survive and, and pursue its ideology. Now, this is something that the international community must know. If, if a country is willing to go under sanctions while for its ideology, it's not go, going to comprom make compromises and give up on its ideology for its environment. Environment and natural resources would be also used um, in order, um, you know, in, 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 uh, and will be sacrificed for, for that ideology. And, and, and the, the, those impacts would be lasting, even if Iran and, and the rest of the world would shake hands tomorrow, if, if JCPOA and the nuclear deal is restored, if Iran is, is the best friends and buddies with, with the United States and Israel starting tomorrow, these impacts would not would not go away. They would last for four generations. It would they would hurt generations of the Iranians, and they all the, the impacts also are transboundary. They they would hurt people, um, you know, in, in neighboring countries. And if you look at the greenhouse gas emissions of Iran, you would know that it, they 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 hurt everyone on this planet because Iran has not also been able to to put a cap on its uh, carbon emissions. Uh, you, speaking of, of carbon emissions, I mean, you said it's important to keep in mind uh, that this would still be an issue irrespective of whether we attribute it to climate change uh, or not. But does that in any way uh, detract from the impact of climate change uh, on the issue and give lawmakers a chance to sort of shed this responsibility for, for environmental policy around uh, the water problem there? So when it comes to to the environmental issues in in the, the developing world and even even in in some some industrial um, and, and advanced economies, um, um, climate change can can be misused. Um, we as scientists have a tendency to climatize a lot of disasters, environmental disasters, because we want to get attention, because we want to find a proof for what we are worried about and get get the society and decision makers united to take an action, an, an immediate action. Now, when it comes to the problems of, of the Middle East, um, a lot of issues um, um, are, ha are the results of, of decades of bad management, as we, we said. But, but climate change, droughts and, and, and floods and other, other um, wildfires and other sorts of extreme events related to, to climate are exacerbating the situation. They, they have a multiplier um, impact. Um, why? Because climate change is increasing the frequency and magnitude um, 
of, of, of um, droughts, of, of wildfires, of, of heat waves and so on. So it, 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 climate change is increasing of the, the or crop water demand, the water demand, it, it, it decreases precipitation. So of course it limits the water budget and it, it also increases the water demand. So it's, it's pressing the countries, but, but if you blame everything on climate change, then the decision makers love you. And, and this is what, what the international media does and, and the Iranian leaders, as well as the developing world leaders welcome. Because, because as soon as you, you say this is climate change related, leaders in Iran, leaders in Iraq, Saudi Arabia, China, wherever else, like any, anywhere else would say that this problem was created by the industrial economies. We had no role in it and we are simply a victim. There was nothing that we could do about it. Now, in terms of uh, addressing uh, the problem or having developing a solution for it, there have been suggestions that one of several ways to, to address this imbalance that we're seeing between uh, the demand and the available supply of water um, is the implementation of an aggressive uh, water demand reduction plan. Um, what would that look like? And could it work? Or are we past the point of, of uh, resolving this through that, through those means at least? I mean, it, it, it is it is it is late, but it's it's not too late. I mean, the situation can get worse than this. Now we can't restore some you know some parts of the ecosystem, but if we act later than this, we would even lose more ecosystem services and components. Um, now we set bankruptcy. So when when you are water bankrupt, you have two choices: um, either increase your supply. This is what what the the, the the leaders have been doing in many countries, increasing water supply through digging deeper wells, um, building bigger dams and transferring water around desalination, recycling and reuse. But what we have seen is that as soon as you, you know, increase water supply, uh, water demand and consumption would also increase because water in supply increase promotes development. So, so countries fall into a vicious cycle of um, de supply demand increase. Um, the other side of the equation is, is, is water uh, consumption, that which must be decreased. If, if you, you believe in, in a system which is bankrupt, you're not going to give it more, more loans. You would ask that system to adjust its expenses and, and, and the available assets. Um, so, so, so right now, Iran must do it. How, how can Iran achieve this? First of all, it, Iran is, is using, using water very inefficiently in all sectors, industrial, domestic, and agriculture. But the agriculture sector is the biggest water user. Now, you cannot um, overnight reduce water consumption in the ag sector unless you have alternative jobs for the farmers. If you don't do that, if farmers are unemployed, they would migrate to cities, they would live in suburbs, economic inequalities would increase, and you would reproduce the Syrian crisis in Iran or anywhere else in the world which is facing the similar situation. So unfortunately, right now, it will be all about um, anger management in Iran, making promises to the farmers, compensating them for their losses. But, but um, I'm, and, and thinking about what can be done long term, Unfortunately, also, I don't see um, this government or the, the current government, the, the structure of the, the governance structure of, of, of water and environment Iran, in Iran um, to be able to, to come up with effective fundamental solutions. As, as we said, um, what the problems are appearing in the water sector, but mm. the root causes can be out of the water sector. Iran needs to fix its economy. It needs to diversify its economy. If it wants to do that, it has to make decisions about its nuclear plans, um, it, 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 um, its international relations, how it wants to, to be friends and deal with the rest of the world, with China, with the US, with, with other countries and so on. And these decisions are not in the hands of those who manage water. It, this, this, this problem must be solved at the highest level in the country. Well, uh, let's hope smarter uh, minds do prevail on this issue. But Kave, uh, thank you so much for your insight. It was really appreciated. Thanks for having me. Well, that's it from us here on All About Money. We'll see you next week.